Hey everybody, it's Saul Cooper today, and in part 5 of Learn to PvP, I'm going to teach you how to use LMS as a practice tool, and not a rage calculator. Let's go. Alright, I'm not even going to mess around and show you guys how to get here. Y'all know how to get here, and next month this place could move. So, if you click on the supply chest here, which I've marked, this is how I like to run my loadout. So, in episode 5, I'm finally going to teach you guys how to PvP and pay to play. So, just a quick recap for you to show your friends. Episode 1 was learn to PvP and free to play. Episode 3 was learn to PK and pay to play. And episode 5 is learn to PvP in LMS, or pay to play, essentially. Anyway, let's get on with it. Alright, so part 1 here for gear and stats. I prefer to run around in magic gear because of how magic accuracy is calculated. I'm not going to go over the equations here, but just be aware, around 75% of your magic accuracy in defense comes from your magic level. Well, about 25% of your magical defense comes from your actual defense level. So with that being said, augury prayer is the highest prayer, and it's said to be the strongest defensive prayer in the game. This is because not only does it amplify your magical accuracy and defense it also applies your defense stats as well so essentially you're getting three prayers in one it's a magic boost defense boost and a magical defensive boost and to finish this statement you could also use protect from magic overhead it's got the highest splash chance you know best getaway advantage okay i don't want to i don't want to dig into that too much just while you're running around, wear your magic gear. If you like, you could wear your dragon hide body, but just run around with magic gear. Augury's great. Let's move on. Alright, and then this is kind of like a moderate loadout here. We got the top switch. It's not exactly the best. I uh, I already recorded some clips here that I'm going to show you guys. So you'll see it's not the best. You want to make sure your mouse DPI is at a decent rate so that you can access these things properly. But uh, the top loadout's nice. That way when you switch off of something like two-handed or whatever, your uh, your shield hand doesn't go to the top of your inventory. Like, it's not a big deal moving from, like, the middle of your inventory to the top of your inventory to put your shield back on. Your shield will kind of end up here. That sort of thing. So not only are we going to be looking at the top switch here, but I also want you to incorporate your ranging potion on this fourth slot. It'll help you figure out kind of a four-way switch and get you used to that sort of maneuver. And then so not every time, but most times you, when you switch to your range gear, you're going to want to pot up too. It's part of the trick. It's a bit of a pot trick. It's not amazing, but it works sometimes. And then much like we're doing this, uh, four-way switch with the pot trick here. That's how I have this bottom portion set up as well. I've got my spec weapon on top of my spec bar, as we remember from episode four when we do the screen markers. This is going to be where my spec bar is. And then so this is a three-way switch. Boom, boom, boom. Technically it's not a three-way switch. It's a pot trick into a two-way switch. But you don't have to tell anybody that. Womp their face, DDS them. And then again, talking about where the shield moves, this uh, having the defender here is useful for um, equipping your shield as well. So you can put these two together. You know, you go in to the DDS, and then you can come out with the whip shield, and then into your rain set. We'll talk about that in another video, but you kind of want to put everything back where you got it from, if that helps. So that's about it. I mean, aside from that, I want you to be aware that we only have two current ones, and we're effectively 126 combat. We have unlimited prayer points, and only two restore potions. And one of these restore potions is a sand feed serum, so this will cure poison. So again, be aware of the differences in these potions, and combo it accordingly, and affordingly. Alright, so part two of this thing, I want to talk about our goals. So before we actually get into LMS, we should be aware of a few things. One, 
you get a point for every player you kill. Two, you want to upgrade anything that can be upgraded. Rune crossbow, rune plate legs, at the very minimum. Three, there will be bots. Some players even theorize that Jagex plants bots in LMS to keep the minigame functioning. Four, you will die. This is why we're at LMS. We will die, regardless of what venue we attend. Number five, this is a minigame, and we are here for fun. We're here to practice, but don't be infuriated when things get tough. You could have played a thousand games. There's going to be a player who's played 10,000 games. It's okay. Number six, turn public chat off. People have tons of ego related habits and I just advise you to turn public chat off when you're practicing. Turn it back on when you're winning. Number seven, I can't find proof, but I swear I saw a Twitter post by a JMod that says there's modified DDS stats. So with all that being said, ten uh, section two here, I just wanted to reiterate my point. We will die. We're here to practice and to have fun. All right, here's part three of the LMS guide. Firstly, I'm gonna split it into three subparts. One is defense, two offense, and three will do PVP. The reason I'm gonna split this into offense and defense is because many things happen in different orders. And based on where you are in the fight, you'll have a different priority of events. So we'll go over defense stance first so we can survive against our opponents, kind of extending our overall placement and opportunity. And then we'll look at offensive or essentially PKing our opponent. And then we'll have some player versus player fights and talk about how all of this comes together. So playing defense, there's a handful of things you need to work up front, as well as in response. Firstly, let's talk about prayer. Your prayer is a response and prevention asset. We will need to observe our opponent's gear and the order they put the gear on to determine our next prayer. The order becomes important when we talk about fakies. For now, we'll just assume that when a player changes their gear, they're committing to the change, and we should respond with appropriate prayer. Say, if you see a staff going, you need to pray magic. If you see a robe top show up, it indicates magic. Next part of defense is our gear. We get defensive bonuses while wearing certain gears based on what's known as the combat triangle. Essentially, while looking at gear, we know that mage beats melee, melee beats ranged, and range beats mage. Try to be aware of this fact, and know that robes are the weakest defensive item you can have on. At any point, if someone goes for a special attack, you must prepare by equipping your tankiest armor. Thirdly, I'd like to speak about the different distances between our opponent. Magical distance is anything from far casting, which means using magic further away than a normal bow could reach, up to using a tree or wall for cover. Be aware of how long you'll be frozen for, and entangle lasts about four crossbow hits. You're free on the third hit, and immune to freeze on the fourth. On their fifth hit, you should be praying magic. Other freeze spells last different times. I should have told you how many hits a barrage is, but you'll get it. Ranging. The ranging distance is simple. It mimics the magical distance, but can only far cast with the long range combat style. The highlight to note for defense when being hit by ranged are the enchanted bolt effects. When an enchanted bolt procs, it has a good chance of dealing considerably more damage, modifying your health to an appealing level for melee distance. Melee distance is a very simple observation. Generally one tiles melee distance. We covered damage stacking in episode 2 of the series, and we'll get more in depth with that in the coming videos. For LMS, I'd advise you, defensively, that if you are hit with an enchanted bolt spec, or consistently taking magical damage, you can prepare to be approached within melee distance. And the final distance I want to cover before moving on is the death dot. The term death dot originates from the RS2 timeline, when the players would gather in multi and wait for another clan. Or unsuspecting player. This gives the appearance for a single player on the minimap, but there are in fact more. I bring up death dotting because this is going to be one of the biggest mechanics that turns LMS from a PvP game into a PK arena. We cannot tell what our opponent is equipping while under us yet. They can use timing manipulation to prevent us from attacking back at all. 
Just a couple of rules for the defense stance. One, never listen to your opponent, ever. Two, in a death dot or being treed, equip your tank gear and crossbow bolt your opponent whenever they step out. Three, only combo eat crumb ones when you're going to die. They are your extra life. But don't be stingy with your potions. Feel free to combo eat brews and restores often. Four, we need to be aware of our opponent's gear rotations in defensive stance the most. Effectively responding to their gear with our prayer is the number one priority in the fight. 5. Proper overhead prayers have your opponent's damage. Of everything, mastering prayer extends your sustainability and leads to outlast potential. Let's look at the offensive stance. Now, traditionally, PvP is an acronym standing for Play vs. Play. LMS is a PvP arena. However, in play versus player, we can do things that are considered unfair to our opponent. But by all logical standards, these are legitimate game mechanics. This being said, in our offensive stance, our highest priority is turning this from PvP into PK. And so our rules are as follows. 1. We hug trees. Trees are our best friends. Fences, doors, walls, death dots. These are all objects in the game that we can go around to escape, trick, or recover. 2. All potions are pot trickable. Healing potions like Cerebrews, recovery potions like Restore, boosting potions like Ranging. If your pot trick potion is gone, use a different one. 3. Offensive prayers are as good as a card hand. Your opponent can't see when you switch to Augury in preparation to refreeze them. They also can't see when you activate Piety for that nasty DDS Rambo combo either. Use these prayers a couple turns before you commit to make an easier time for gear switching. 4. Put it back. Put everything back where you got it. In the order you got it. Or you will regret it. This especially becomes relevant when looking at melee spec weapons. After you use it, don't jump right into magic because freeze is needed. Return a crossbow shield, then equip your robes and staff. You'll thank yourself later. 5. Fakies. You'll come to find that magic is more difficult to learn than ranged, for the simple fact that there is no autocast combat style in PvP. It is important that while you learn your magic switch, that you can perform the fakie. Simply put, the level 1 fakie would be equipping your magic gear, and then equipping your ranged gear before attacking again, thus tricking your opponent into praying the wrong style for the coming attack. Play with fakies, you'll find plenty more. An old friend showed me a 2 item fakie is good for beginners. 6. Tick stalling. Tick stalling is a vague term used to describe any time that something causes an attack to be delayed. Food stalls ticks. A 0 1 tick switch can stall ticks. You can click the ground to stall your tick. Essentially, tick stalling is when the player stops their character from attacking to open up a window for an unpredictable attack. For example, you can bolt consecutively until you do something to tick stall, say, Equipping your magic gear will t stop you from attacking, stalling your ticks, and giving your opponent ample time to react to your magical armors. Following a tick delay with a one tick godsword special will be hard to defend. 7. Auto Retaliate Auto Retaliate is good for artificial intelligence, but we aren't pre-calculated, so we'll be turning this off, so that we can avoid being predictable by your opponent. Automatically responding to an attack will fire your attack prematurely. It could even be an inappropriate style, and could drag your character in even more danger than you expected. Now for our final portion of this LMS guide, I just wanted to go over a little bit of the third round. I ended up doing five rounds for each stance that I'm trying to describe here, but I don't exactly have more to teach for the third style. so. I kind of want us to watch a handful of things here and just listen to me kind of discuss um, some final notes, final thoughts. So I spent a little extra time making this guide. I wanted it to be short and sweet, but it's very complex. And this is really the first guide where I'm actually getting into the click mechanics and ordering and gear switching. And we're really digesting a whole lot here. And so I want I wanted to kind of prepare us for LMS with the previous four episodes. And hopefully now you already know what I'm talking about. 
So when we go into this, it's kind of more about playing as a main character, learning how to equip tank armors, learning how to um, reconfigure your inventory in the middle of a fight because you messed it up, because this sweet weapon you just picked up just messed up your inventory. Remember, put it back. Put that stuff back, or you're really going to mess yourself over. After you combo eat, you need to make sure that you restore, or you're going to mess up your barrage. Combo eats are going to be defense, and then barrage is offense, so I figured this is the place for that. Talking about upgrades, as you get more and more upgrades in LMS, you're going to find it hard to manage your inventory. In my opinion, we just drop the crossbow as soon as we get a ballista or dark bow. They're slow, but they got some real good zero tick effect. I haven't had a chance to talk about bots and auto hotkey yet, so this is just going to be a quick little bit here. Bots are programmed, right? We are not. So when they see you do something, they can instantly figure out what you're doing. But that's why we love the zero tick. Not only do players struggle with the zero tick, bots can't figure it out either. Put on one weapon and zero tick to the other. Got him. AHK players are fairly similar to the bots. Bots are good, but the auto hotkeys, they actually try to be good. On top of having, say, the goodness that the bot has. So, all you have to do is outclass their artificial intelligence and uh, tilt their real life intelligence. Make them tilt they'll literally walk away. You'll see a handful of players that just die. They don't do anything about it. They can't. All right, uh, I think this is the last topic here. Just freezing, demoralizing your opponent. This is why our rules state never listen to your opponent ever. Uh, Safing is not real. Talk about psychological warfare. Anything that you do that they consider unfair, it, it's like plus one, plus five, plus 50 on their tilt meter. And then everybody's got a tilt meter and, you know, depending on your day, you could tilt hard in a video game. So just freeze them, stand around a tree and start laughing. I don't know. You might get a couple of quits. All right. I think that's it. That's... No, wait. <clears throat> And that's all for episode 5 of Learn to PvP and PK with Koopa. This was the LMS episode where we covered actually PvPing. How was that? You guys like that? Push the buttons. Push the buttons. I might actually try a little harder if y'all push the buttons, to be honest. I can do graphics and thumbnails and clickbait. Good luck.